What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we're actually going to be talking about the ABC Family Freeform series Pretty Little Liars in this video here today. I've never talked about this series on, on my channel, but I might start doing it a bit more given that the original Sin spinoff series is expected to debut this summer on HBO Max. And I'll probably do like recap videos on that and maybe do a little bit more Pretty Little Liars videos in relation to this original series that started back in 2010. So I like thousands of you out there who probably surface or come across this video. I subjected myself to weekly viewings of this series from day one all the way to 2017 when it ended. And I think there's a general consensus that season one and two are the best seasons. And as you see in the thumbnail, this is pertaining to Mona Vanderwall, who, spoiler alert, yes, she is a in the original first two seasons. If you somehow managed to click on this video, and just miss the spoiler alone in the, in the thumbnail but diving into why mona is the best eighth as it pertains to what i see from her compared to the other two that we get later on in the series so the series itself revolves around these group of girls who a year after their friend disappearing start receiving these anonymous texts from this assailant who threatens to expose like all their darkest secrets and just threaten them in general uh, and their loved ones as a result as it pertains to certain secrets that they thought only that dead disappeared friends should know so at one point in the series at the end of season two we find out that one of the a's because there's three in total by the end of it is mona vanderwall and mona is a character who as compared to the other two a's when it comes to her reveal since we get it so early on in the show and because the show was so successful what they end up doing is exploring her a little bit more over the course of seasons three through seven we get to spend more time with this character we get to see more layers to her we get to see the impact that she's had on these characters as it pertains to what she caused in the first two seasons um i think she had the strongest impact on all the liars as well aria Hannah, Spencer, Emily alike, she had a gigantic impact on them. Arya's, Arya's parents got broken up because of her. Uh, Hannah had re constant reminders about her weight problems because of Mona and the fact that Mona was Hannah's best friend. So that was another another big uh, heartache to Hannah when, it, the, when that reveal came. As we saw in the episode, she was the most distraught over it from what I saw. And Spencer, she's literally challenged by Mona academically. Spencer really prides herself on academics. So then when you have someone who basically cyber bullied you and who's also someone who you kind of didn't necessarily bully when Allison was in town, but you kind of never stood up for her in response to that bullying. Now she's here challenging what you pride yourself on so much, which is academics. And she's doing it quite well. She even beats her at one point. There's actually a moment in the series where Mona causes Spencer to have a mental breakdown and she were, she ends up being in Rally Sanitarium where Mona actually does spend some time herself after the, after the uh, season two finale unmasked, where someone ultimately just steals the game from her they say and as it relates to mona there's also countless clues that i myself didn't really notice upon first watch of course so like when she's hacking and getting emily back onto the swim team obviously that's something many of us should have caught on to also the fact that there's an episode in season one where she's literally giving out black hoodies to those in attendance of camp mona i believe which is like a birthday party she threw for herself and also the instances where the series very early on at the, i would say in the pilot episode sets up the fact that the liars and allison had basically created a uh, rift between themselves and mona so there's already tension there between them and the other things that pertain to mona i would say and the clues that i missed was when she started getting a messages how she was so like urgent about getting them to see that she's getting these texts like she's literally trying to throw them off her trail and the other thing was just about hannah and that hefty hannah thing that got brought up from a at the time of the show airing i believe the only person who was thought to have known about that was allison and also mona because mona and hannah spent their time carving new looks for themselves together and that's where that bond formed so it's like okay well allison's not here but mona is so that was another thing that I just let go over my head. Uh, but also when it pertains to Mona compared to the other A's, when you go back and look at season one and two and the series as a whole, the cohesiveness is more in line with Mona's reveal than the other two. Also, the fact that with Mona, she gets one glorious reveal and it's amazing. The other two get like, not the last one, the last one gets one reveal, but the second one, 
who I'm not trying to say spoilers for any of you who actually want to go out of your way to watch this show. I'm not trying to spoil it all in its entirety, but I probably, again, am going to just end up spoiling anyway with future videos with thumbnails. But anyway, with the second A reveal that we get, we get that person revealed like three times before or two times prior to them being this big A reveal. And it's like, OK, we already knew about them. This it was underwhelming. Also, the narrative around them didn't make sense. That's when a lot of the plot holes started raveling, unraveling. And you saw as the show progressed that Mona and her arc and how we get to see the impact she's had on these characters through season three and seven, it surpasses in a lot of ways what these other two A's are doing because we don't really get to see the impact after the fact. The second A is killed very early on in the next season after their reveal. And the last A we find out in the series finale, we don't get to spend too much time with these people to know how these girls felt about her or or him or them. So we don't really know anything about those last two outside of the things we learn along the way prior to knowing that they were A, we don't really get that inside introspective look at them like I feel we did with Mona over the course of the season or the rest of the series as she was able to always have this feeling of untrust between herself and other characters they never knew what she was thinking she was always having them having them on the edge and making them think that she was up to no good sometimes she was actually trying to help them because we saw that she actually became a protagonist over the course of the series and with Mona it's just again a more cohesive narrative the other two it's more convoluted it's more plot hole filled it's more it's more dragged out with those two as well and the simplicity of it all starts and ends with mona mona is a reminder of the kind of like the simpler better times of the series before it did go off the rails but i'm looking forward to seeing what we get in pretty little liars original sin seeing if there are any special cameos i do again believe mona vanderwall was the best a considering all the things that i just mentioned but let me know who you guys thought was the best a in the series or if you thought it was mona let me know why down in the comment section below just add on more reasons why she was best over the other two let me know all that down in the comment section below and what's your favorite season of pretty little liars let me know that too if you watch the series unfortunately <laughs> uh down again in the comment section but if you haven't already make sure you subscribe turn on post vacation and miss the video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course so let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video